Uh, so just waiting for Lockie Staples to, to jump on. Uh, should be on any minute. Welcome to the newest episode. Um, thanks for all your questions that you've, that you've sent in. Uh, hope it's all gone well this week, this weekend at uh, Chandler. So Lockie's just jumped on now. Hi, Lockie. Hey, how you doing, mate? Yeah, good, good. Yourself? Good, yeah, well, thanks, mate. Just down here at the Logan, mate, with the club today, which is awesome, back into it. So, yep. yeah, so good to be back. We've got our 30 juniors swimming, so having a really good day. Nice, nice. They all gone well so far, first meet back? So far, yeah, they've done so well. We've had about 10 kids that haven't even raced before that have just sort of built into it last year, some younger ones, so... A lot of first yep. um, first timers, so it's been really good. Pretty much all PBs so far, so everyone's refreshed and ready to go. That's great. That's great. Yeah. The break probably did them well. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we're seeing that. We're seeing that. But you know, even the older ones, I think for everyone, just that bit more time away from it, and uh, they've come back fresh. Yep. And yeah, you know, it'll, it'll take time to get the fitness back on the older guys, but um, you know, they're buying in and they're keen to work, so it's really good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. Um, we've just got a few questions here for you um, just regarding your swimming career uh, as a professional swimmer when you were an Australian Dolphin a few years ago, uh, your coaching career now, and we'll talk a bit more about the Why Not Me swim clinics that you've got with Thomas Fraser Holmes that you do um, all year round pretty much other than when COVID hit, but uh, exactly, hopefully you'll yeah. be jumping back on those soon. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. So first question, when when did you start swimming and why swimming of all sports? Um, I started swimming, I did nippers growing up. So um, grew up near the beach, um, did surf life saving and nippers. Um, and I was about, I was a bit like, I was middle of the run. You know, some kids come in a bit later, some kids come in earlier. But for me, I did nippers all along and I did started joining swim club um, at about 10, I think. Um, and then through school swimming, sort of made it to Sydney North um, and, and that around 11. And then that's when I sort of got introduced to swimming and realised I really like swimming butterfly. And then so from there, I just sort of juggled and I was probably more predominantly surf life-saving until I was probably 15. Um, but about 13, I went to my first age nationals and um, made a team to go to New Zealand. And, and after that, then I knew that that was more what I was really looking into doing. And so... Um, really started from 13 I really found the love probably 12 13 and that's when it really started consuming me and why I think um I already had the swimming background and whatnot but then I just loved the individualness I played football as well but I loved I loved about the sport that you could directly work hard and see the results um the outcomes you know you were not leaving too much up to chance and I think that's a pretty common thing for most swimmers is why they love it is they can take a bit more control of the outcome and and uh, see the results directly. So, yeah, and then just go yeah. with it from there. Uh, in saying that, what was the highlight of your swimming career? So, you, you did make the Australian Dolphins team um, a few times. Um, out, out of all the achievements yeah. that you made, um, you know, what was your favourite? It, it also couldn't be it, – it doesn't have to be a, a highlight, just maybe even your best time that you had as a swimmer. Yeah. I think, yeah, as, as a highlight for me and, and, and in my career, I look back to my, 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 the thing that probably I got at the time most excited about and I was proudest about was um, winning my first age nationals at 17. Um, for me, um, as far as the meets and going to world championships, that was easily my best experience, but my best race and the, you know, something that I look back on and I just remember just, you know, I was elated. Um, I got second at age nationals from 13, 14, 15, 16. Every year just kept coming second. And every year it motivated me, went back, worked harder, worked harder, worked harder. And it took me until I was 17 um, in Brisbane at age nationals to actually get my first national title. And, um, you know, just doing that was, you know, that, that had been a goal, you know, that literally I, I, I went to age national at 13. I probably didn't want it then, but by 14, 15, 16, I did everything those years to win. And it didn't come off. And so, you know, by the time it happened, you know, I, I broke down. Like, I was – after it, I was I was so, so happy with that. So, yeah, that was probably my biggest achievement um, for personally, just for me, because of how long I worked for that exact goal for it to come off. Um, so, mm. yeah, that, that really rings true to me. And, yeah, I think it set me up. And then from there was, you know, that belief that I could, you know, really give it a shake from there. So that's where I, I think I got my most momentum from as well was from that result. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so this next question probably applies to a lot of people uh, who are swimmers and high profile swimmers. Um, you know, when, when you were growing up as a swimmer, did you always want to become a coach after your swimming career? Um, no, I sort of, I, I enjoyed it. I did it. Um, I used to coach um, before my squad started when I was young, just to um, cover fees and, and I was at the pool anyway. And so I enjoyed that yeah. and, and I enjoyed working with kids, but I had no idea really what I wanted to do. I knew when I was swimming that, you know, probably by the end, I knew that, you know, there was an opportunity um, to get into some coaching um, and I took it. And then when the swimming wrapped up, I, yeah, I really, I really started enjoying the coaching more and more after I wasn't swimming myself. And I, I knew that, you know, that was, that was what I wanted to do. It was probably when I was still swimming, I did it, but I wasn't sure because it was a lot of time at the pool. But after I finished swimming and got into coaching, I knew it was what I wanted to do, yeah. But all along, I, I didn't really think too much about setting my life up a whole lot. I was just swimming and sort of doing what was going on. So it wasn't until I started coaching that I knew that that was what I wanted to do, I think. Yeah. Uh, what are some lessons or tips that you've taken from your professional swimming career that have helped you become a, su a successful coach today? Um, Probably, yeah, very similar. I think that just understanding that hard work pays off, that simple as that, you know, if you, with anything, doesn't matter what it is, if you back yourself and you're willing to work hard, as hard as or harder than the people around you and, and you know, then that, that's going to help you and you've got, to, you've got to remember that. And so, you know, I think the honesty of it as well, um, you know, coming up as a swimmer, you, you are open, you know, it's, it's really honest, you know, the scoreboard's right there. It's very, it's brutally honest in all aspects and, as a coach, you need to be doing that as well, you know, and, and just that honesty and just knowing that hard work does pay off and, you know, and to, even if it doesn't seem like it is at that time, just, just knuckling down and sticking to it. So I think that's the biggest thing that you can take into any aspect in life of whatever it is that you're doing, that, you know, that hard work will always be there for you when you need it. Yeah. Uh, what was your favourite achievement as a swimmer? So you, you touched on before that your uh, national age uh, gold medal when you were 17 uh, was a great achievement. Would that would that be your number one favourite achievement? I think I think that was my most memorable um, achievement because of the reason I stated. But I think obviously yeah, going to Worlds in 09 that was you know the highlight for me. Just again that was the next goal from that 17 year old was you know really pushing to try and make the team. So. Um, when that when that happened and, and being over there and you know I was I was so nervous it was it's it's almost like a blur to look back at my racing side of that meet like I, I don't remember much at all it was just like I felt like I was just nervous for two weeks um, until I finished yeah. but <laughs> everything about it you know it was just such a highlight and that was I think that was something like 50 world records um, broken there it was crazy because of the suits and whatnot so you know that's that's the, the pinnacle of, of what I did in my swimming yeah. And and for anyone who doesn't know uh, terribly much about your swimming career when you were a swimmer, you arguably grew up within the most competitive 200 butterfly in Australian history, being Nick Darcy and uh, Chris Wright also there yeah. as well. So, yeah. I mean, it wasn't e it never is easy uh, as a swimmer, obviously, but. Um, yeah, I, th I think you got a bit unlucky there growing up in that time. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think unlucky and lucky because I just remember being such a such a time. There was, you know, at the year after that, 2010, I got fifth at Commonwealth Games trials um, back in shorts in a 157 mid. Um, so it ended up being faster than any the American trials that year. Um, we had Grant come up that year, Jaden Hadler, mm. Wrighty, Darcy. Um, Travis Nedipelt was around there for a year. Josh Crow was around at the start. Um, and then you had Adam Table. So there was like, every time you race, you knew it was all on. I remember a few races that were just crazy. Um, there was a short course trying to fly where I finished third. And uh, Riley and Darcy tied for first. And all three of us were under the previous Australian record in that race. And so it was a, it was a really crazy time for Butterfly. But it was really good to be a part of. So, yeah, wouldn't have changed it. <laughs> What is the best thing about being a coach? Um, keeping that, you know, it's, it's keeping in the environment of swimming. You know, I think that I get so pumped at meets still. And, you know, you still feel the same way, if not even more nerve wracking, you know, being that you don't have the control come race time. But being able to, you know, it still feels so 
close in the memory. I can remember everything in my swimming career so well and being able to coach on the other side and relate. I still really do feel that, that energy that comes with, you know, preparing for a meet, you know, go, I, you know, I really do feel it as we're moving through. So to be able to still do that um, as a job is just an absolute, absolute blessing. And, and, you know, seeing those guys do, do the work and get the results and, and you know, push through those tough times. Um, it's, it's a pleasure. And then also working with young people is just awesome, you know, um, yeah, good energy and yeah, keeps you young and keeps you on your toes for sure. Mm. So this is from, uh, I think you probably know who this person would be. Uh, says, hi Lachlan, who is your favorite 10 year old male swimmer in your junior squad at Redeemer? <laughs> Dude, that's specific, isn't it? All right. Yeah, I think I know who that is. I think that's going to be, I think that might be young. Sammy might have sent that in. Is that right? Yeah. There's a couple of Sammy boys that maybe Sammy Prendergast might have sent that one in, mate. If you're watching Sammy, it's you, mate. And uh, if anyone else is, it's you. So. <laughs> um, so this is the next question. Uh, why did you change your hairstyle? And that's from Peach Fuzz. Hey, I, I don't have a hairstyle. I, yeah, it's just when I get a haircut. It's just when it's getting too unruly. I need a haircut right now, actually. So, yeah, my hair was just whatever it was. At that stage, I think I probably just had my mum cutting my hair for me before I went away. So I didn't really take too much. It was like a bowl in that photo. It was like yeah. a Lego haircut. So I saw that. It's not much better at the moment. Yeah, I want to apologize. I want to apologise for that because uh, we were trying to <laughs> we're trying to look at a swimming related. Uh, picture that we could use for our um, for our page, but every other one was pixelated. So I mean, like the draw. Oh, so okay, yeah, with that one, that's, that's okay. I like that photo anyway. It's got yeah good memories behind it over there. It was good. All good. <laughs> you just get a lot of stick, especially from Fraser Holmes, who's just joined. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't miss. He, he tries to get his back when he can. He's on the receiving end sometimes. So you know, he's he's got to even the scores up sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so two part question for this next one. Um, so favorite ever swim meet that you've been to and favorite housemate. And that was from Richard small 90. <laughs> Not him. Not him. <laughs> no, Richard, he's awesome. He was one of my first mates that I made when I moved up to Brisbane almost 10 years ago. He was playing water polo at the time. So um, in QAS, so met him and yeah, we've been best mates ever since. So he is in UK now. Um, so he won't be listening, so not him. Um, <laughs> um, favorite swim meet would have to be it'd have to be Worlds, as I said. Um, the experience of racing there, and then not only racing but being around the team, and just every morning, every night, just watching world records, and you know, people just consistently doing things that they didn't think would happen. You know, um, every race was just another, another, another crazy world record, and so it was the energy there, and obviously the setting over there. So that was my favorite meet. Uh, yeah. yeah, not place, not a bad place to be in Rome. Oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, outdoor pool. <laughs> you know, the sun it it gets warm, but the sun doesn't seem to burn you too much. And yeah, it was nice. Yeah, I think they've got an ozone layer um, up there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went uh, <laughs> two years ago. It was it was great. It's probably one of my favourite places to ever go. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, so, question eleven. Um, <laughs> I think this is another dig at your haircut, but uh, do hairstyles <laughs> correlate to coaching and athlete performance? <laughs> I hope so. I really hope so. But, but I don't know, because there's not much style about it, is there? It's just a lot of hair everywhere. <laughs> um, you know, but if you look at some of the best, you know, I'm thinking, you know, Michael Bowl, you know, one of the world's best coaches, he's got, he's got a head of hair on him, doesn't he? He's um, yeah. a 20-year-old, that head of hair. So I don't, know. I don't know how he deals with stress and still has hair like that. But um, I might have to talk to Bowley about it because I think it might. Someone might have just cracked it. We'll have, to, have to get Bowley on and ask him that question. Yeah. Look good, feel good. Isn't that the same? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it. So who knows how much hair I've got left in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is your favourite Australian dolphin and why? And I'm going to throw a curveball in here and say you can't say Fraser Holmes because that's too biased. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, yeah, being a bit older, um, and yeah, you're only a couple of years young yourself, but, um, growing up was like household names. We were so fortunate of growing up when I was so young and ads, you had Thorpey, Hacky, you know, um, 
Susie O'Neill, you had just the team was absolutely on fire. I think that's, you know, the best year of Australian swimming easily. And if we're going to get back to it, you know, that's that's the benchmark and that's what we're looking at because you look at that team, you know, that 2000 team, that is just such an imposing team. So it could have been any one of those guys. I would say um, it has to be Hacky. Um, growing up and yep. doing surf life savings and sort of doing a bit of longer stuff and, and seeing that and, uh, and I was a big Kai Hurst fan through surf life saving as well and, and they were pretty close there in their own um, disciplines but um, yeah you, you, yeah, for me just the way Hacky raced and every time the way just you could see that that was everything and more and he was able to just put more into a race than most have ever seen and I think it's still, you know, just the energy and effort he would put into a race. There was definitely no doubt that there was nothing left in the tank every time he swam. And the stuff he overcame, whether it be, you know, the, the lung stuff in 08 and that to get that one. And, yeah, so he he consistently was a huge, um, a huge, yeah, I guess, hero for all of us growing up. And then, you know, got to spend some time with him and meet him when he moved to the Gold Coast and had a bit of a swim there. So, and that was pretty surreal. And, yeah, yeah, what a guy, hey? Yeah. Uh, so hardest swim set that you've ever done as a swimmer and favourite set? Oh, the hardest. Um, oh, hardest was probably like, I didn't like doing, well, later I, my shoulders used to burn up in freestyle sets. So um, I did a 3K fly straight one time. That was hard, but I enjoyed doing that. <laughs> Um, I was just trying to see. I asked my coach what's the furthest he's ever seen, and he said he saw someone do a 3k once. And so I did that, and that was fun because it was challenging the whole way. But I just found like if it was a team, like at Christy, you do the 100 hundreds or something like that. Those sorts of sets for me are really hard, long freestyle sets would probably burn my shoulder up the most. And favorite set, um, 200 pace set, 1650s on one minute 30. Just trying to hold. It's it's two hundred pace set, but I never, you know, you're basically trying to hold as fast as you can for those sixteen fifty. Yeah. And, you know, you, you you put yourself in the hurl locker early and just you know refocus and just try and repeat the same thing sixteen times, and that was really really good. Yeah, that's my favourite set. Now sure. we do that with the squad a lot. Yeah, yeah, I do love a good sprint set with plenty of rest. <laughs> exactly. Yes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now we'll talk a bit about uh, your swim clinics that uh, yourself and Thomas Fraser Holmes do together. Um, so why not me swim clinics? Um, you do plenty, plenty for the the grassroots uh, swimming communities. Um, just want to ask you a few questions uh, surrounding that. So how did the idea come up? Yeah. So um, Tommy and I are both from. Um sort of rural areas. I'm from the Central Coast, about an hour and a half north of Sydney, and Tommy's from Newcastle, about another hour, hour and a half north of that, so about three hours from Sydney. Um, and like I said before, I, I, you know, when we were growing up, we were fortunate enough that, that swimming and stuff, life saving, all this stuff was really, you know, household names in front of you. You know, every second ab was a swimmer. Um, it, was, it was really, it was really in your face, and it was, and it was really good, and we'd see that, and that path will be there. And uh, we wanted to see, you know, now there's so many sports and so much going on. And we wanted to, you know, especially for kids in rural communities and whatnot, I think the states and in areas where they're from get amazing opportunities now to really get to know your swimmers and be there. And we wanted to put something together that, you know, wasn't so much a, a coach led clinic. It was a clinic that we brought in athletes and went through and spoke about their story. And, you know, cause we know being in it that, we all just have normal backgrounds and stories and very humble beginnings. And, um, and I think that when you're a swimmer growing up, you sometimes put athletes on a pedestal and think there's something, you know, superhuman about them and that, you know, something, you know, you don't, you don't understand a piece together at a young age that, Hey, like this is exactly where they were. And, you know, things just went their way and they worked hard and took opportunities and, and got there. And so we really, really wanted to instill and get kids to be able to see from a young age, Hey, where you are right now is exactly where these guys were, and, you know, and have them chat and talk about their stories and, you know, the kids get to see and, you know, how, how normal and just human people who are just really good at swimming are and, you know, so, somewhat take them, you know, off that pedestal a bit and understand that, that you know, in, be inspired to go and realise I can do this and maybe, you know, when I am swimming that, you know, that's what they did too. I, I am good enough. I can be good enough. And um, hence the name, why not me, you know, instilling that, belief that well you know if i turn up every day if i work hard 
um, there's no reason why it can't be. And I think the more kids we have believing that from a young age, young age and backing themselves, it's just, you know, we have 23 million people. We don't have the numbers to, you know, to waste to some of the bigger countries. Let's, we want all these kids to, to believe they can and, and, and they will. You know, we've got 50, 50 people make a team every year. They've got to be made up of someone. So, you know, the more mm. kids we can get pushing and, and believing in themselves, because I think that's the most important thing, that, that confidence and belief, you know, that they can do it. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's the most important thing, you know, because then that drives the training, that drives the effort, everything. It's that mindset that means more than anything else, you know, that self-driven attitude. And if we can set that up from a young age and have kids enjoying their time and, and seeing that swimming can be fun as well and it is fun, um, then that's how the uptake will come and that's how we'll see that, see that. And those kids will get to meet their hero, not just see them on a TV or a poster or, you know, here they physically get to meet them, get to hold their medal, get to get a photo, um, and all that stuff and then go home and, and, and really motivate them to work their butt off to, you know, get back to the next clinic and, and update how they're going. Yeah. Yeah, it's really yeah. important that you mentioned uh, the rural communities um, because growing up, all my competitors that came from rural communities felt like they didn't have the same opportunity. But when you look at it statistically, um, like off the top of my head, dolphins in the past have been... Tommy Fraser Holmes, yeah, yourself, been yeah, from yeah, Newcastle. Um, you got James Magnuson, who's from Port Macquarie. Matt Wilson, Blue Mountains. Brad Woodward, yeah. who's from Central Coast, New South Wales. So yeah. it's it's super important that we that we continue to get that support to the rural communities as well as the the more city based communities. One hundred percent, and that, and there's no better time for that, honestly, than right now because you look at what swimming New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland are doing, and they've got so much great programs set up for the rural communities you know in queensland you've got guys like brant going you know brant best you know maggie's coach heading out to rural queensland to run clinics and and so there's so much of that going on and we love to do that get back to hometowns you know we did one with maggie it was the best get back to port macquarie to get a clinic there and you know took tommy about newcastle so that's a big part of it too is to get back to the community the, the town with the swimmer who's come from that town and um run that clinic and yeah and as you said, you know, as a, we, we produce so much talent out of places like that and, you know, making sure that those yeah. juniors in those areas are getting the opportunities through their own state bodies. And also, if we, you know, we don't want to be just doing it in cities and that. We want to be out there as well doing these clinics, you know, as well to make sure that, you know, they're completely getting the exact same opportunity um, to succeed. And that's, as a country, what will help us the most. Yeah. Uh, so where are the next locations that we, you would like to be the, the clinics to be in? Um, realistically, Queensland at the moment. Um, I, you know, the scope <laughs> right now to, you know, we've, we've had, a, had a lot of balls rolling to come into summer here um, with a lot more going on and we're just sort of trying to work through everything at the moment, but we want to be everywhere. You know, we're talking places in Perth. We want to get down to Victoria um, when the time's right, obviously not, you know, right now, but we, we want to be everywhere. Um, so yeah, so that we got plenty of plans. It's just about working through them and, and working out how it's going to look, but we will be back and um, we're going to be everywhere. We're going to be going everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you give us some insight into who might host the next swim clinics, or who you would like to host the next swim clinics? Oh, there's there's so many good options. I think um, there's a lot of people who we haven't done clinics before, which we're super yeah. keen to work with. Um, so as we work through this, that's um, Tommy's the best. Tommy's in everyone's ear, always trying to, you know, tee up people yeah. and and times and whatnot. Um, but. Our, probably our most popular Australian athlete was we ran one with Cam and people just love Cam and McAvoy. And so, you know, something with him. But as I said, anyone and getting people back, oh, got a bit of rain now. I'm going to have to relocate. Um, oh. But, yeah, um, yeah. To, right now we got to work out some dates and that before we go. But, yeah, we're, anyone on that team is a great option for us and every story is different. So, you know, anyone, yeah, we haven't – Tom. that's Tommy's job. Tommy, you're listening. Yeah. Sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this next question, you know, pretty, pretty similar to the last one. Um, but so any international summer that you could pick from right now to come over and host a clinic, who would it be and why? Ooh. Right now, well, if 
Yeah, obviously, you never want to be Phelps. You imagine a one on one Michael Phelps. Imagine that. Imagine yeah. that person to person. I'll be, you know, I'll be getting a ticket and being there. But um, Phelpsy, <laughs> but a current swimmer, um, Caleb Dressel, um, you know, um, Sarah Showstrom, she would be amazing to get in. Um, you know, yeah, there's so many to name, but yeah, international, current international, I would choose Sarah Showstrom or Caleb Dressel. Um, yeah, that would be amazing getting for a clinic. <laughs> uh, you're bringing in inspiration to the swimming youth uh, with your Wine On Me swim clinic. So what inspires you? Um, I, I, I really, um, I just feel lucky to, to be able to do this sort of stuff. And I, I honestly enjoy it and love it. And um, so it doesn't take much motivation. I don't feel, I think that I'm so lucky. You know, a lot of people search in life for something they love and, and, and to do that. And, you know, I absolutely love swimming, so I'm not going to go looking for something else. I love it. And to be able to work in it and, you know, have a living coaching and, and being, you know, having an opportunity to run clinics and do that and stay in touch for, for us also, like I go to the clinics and I'm watching these swimmers talk about stuff and I'm listening in and learning. So for me, it's, I get inspired just being able to be there and be a part of it. And then just seeing the excitement and the kids and even coming to carnivals like this, um, you know, seeing the kids' faces when they're, you know, swimming their swims, it's just, yeah, that, that's what inspires me, just the energy that they give back. Yeah. Uh, so you had Adam Peaty, uh at, at one of your One on Me Swim clinics. So what, what was he like? He was so relaxed. He, he was awesome. He came in, um, Tommy obviously knew him. I hadn't met him before. Met him and, and just having a chat, just relaxed, um, went through the clinic. He's like, yep, yeah, got it. And just, you know, same thing. He, you know, he could have, you know, given what he had done and in the sport and, you know, how precious his time is when he's in the middle of a training camp on the Gold Coast, you know, the, you know, you know he's going to be working hard and had a morning practice. I think he did four hours. He came in sunburnt because he was training at Southport and, you know, had that um, English tan going on. But, um, so, but he... he he said, I think he swam a massive session that day, but you would not have known it. He just got himself up, had the energy. You know, he's definitely, yeah, you could definitely just feel that aura around him that, you know, he backed himself and, and he always will back himself. So, you know, just the confidence, you know, that it was just, he was very humble, very confident and just super grateful for the position he was in and what swimming had given him. And yeah, he... He went above and beyond for the clinic and just that consistency with everyone that comes to a clinic. It's just the same sort of principles that they, you know, they've got that work ethic. They've got good energy and, you know, they enjoy what they do. And, you know, that, that, that fierce competitor, you know, he said a few things through the talk that just really nailed home just how, how competitive he is and how, how tough on himself he is and that he would always, you know, be his own hardest critic. Yeah. Uh, so outside of coaching or swimming, um, do you have a passion that you that you do or a hobby? Oh, big hobby guy. I love hobbies. Um, I'm yeah. very like I'll, I I I love surfing. Um, yeah, I've always surfed, and I absolutely love that. And that's probably my number one hobby. But I also, I, you know, I go through phases with what I'm doing. Lots of I like riding mountain bikes. Um, I have a motorbike. I like working on that and riding that. And so, yeah, big hobby guy. Love a hobby. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and last question, advice that you would give your younger self today? Ooh, advice. Um, I wouldn't change anything. I, I think I'm stoked with how everything went. And, um, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy the time I had and the way I did things. I think um, being patient, you've got to be patient. I probably, you know, could have been a bit more patient at times. Um, you know, whether it was an injury or anything, I, you know, I could have been a bit more patient. Um, and just build a good group around you of people you really do trust and trust them. You know, don't just try and take everything yep. on yourself because um, you'll just end up overthinking things. So I think build a core group of people around you that you know you trust and just work through everything with those people. And um, that's a massive part, I think. Just build a good team, trust in your team and don't overthink other things because you could lay around thinking about things all day and, you know, things aren't going too great. Don't overthink that. Just... You know, you're always going to have ups and downs and don't get too down when it's down. Just get to work, keep your head up, keep enjoying it and it'll come around. Yeah. Well, thanks yeah. so much. I'm sorry that it's all rained on you now. No, it's all good. It's all good. Four seasons, hey? <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks so much uh, again, Lockie, for coming on and um, answering our questions and, and our followers' questions. Uh, I hope that you have a successful afternoon at the pool. Uh, yeah, and all, all the best. Cheers, Jacob. Thanks, mate. And these are awesome. I watched last weekend too, and these are really good. So, yeah, keep these up. <laughs> and, yeah, I'll tune back in and watch them. So, thank you for the effort and what you're doing for us. Good stuff. Yeah, no worries. No worries. Thanks, heaps. Have a good one. No worries. Cheers, guys. Take it right. easy. See ya. Yeah. Thanks for join, uh, tuning in, guys. Um, so within the next, I'd say, 12 to 24 hours, I'm going to put up a, a little silhouette uh, of who our next person's going to be. Um, we've also got a giveaway. So we're going to give away a swimmer shack and funky trunks hoodie. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be a little competition. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.